Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, learning about nature, bird apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today we're talking about learning about nature with specific apps designed to look at birds and birds are all around us. It's one of those things in nature that all kids are exposed to, whether you're living in an urban area or in rural areas, in suburban areas, there are always backyard birds, there are birds out in nature, we can see them, they interact, bird feeders and all of that. So lots of opportunities to learn about nature and to observe nature and there are great apps that help us do that. The apps don't actually help you find the birds necessarily but they do help you identify the birds, save pictures of the birds and really tell you about the way they are, their habitats, their behaviors, migration and all of that. So there's great information out there and they're all in specific apps and um, if you've got phones, and a lot of these apps will work on phones, you can take them out in the field, you're still connected and therefore they can help you do identification in real time. If not, you can take devices, take pictures, and then bring them back and do identification and learn more about them. The first one, the first app I want to talk about is from National Geographic and it's called Bird's Light. National Geographic has a, a, a wonderful number of apps out there and this is one of them. And you can find species uh, in different ways so you can look at them alphabetically so you can go uh, alphabetically or you can go by family or taxonomy so uh, the way they're organized uh, together and then you can select by things like color um, so you can filter the bird so if you know something about the bird you've seen you can start deciding on when it is so for example I'm saying it's now September when I'm uh, creating this one. You will probably see it sometime in November, but that's okay. And the habitat will be, our habitat is in the grasslands. And then we're talking about uh, birds that are a uh, goose size or larger. And there are no birds like that. But if I go to crow size or larger, I have rock pigeons, the American kestrel and the American crow. And if you click on it, you can see multiple pictures and you can see that there's actually two of them identifying them on the ground and then in the air. You have information about them and you can add them to your list of preferred ones. I love the fact that you can look at maps, see where they are. In the case of the crow, it's everywhere. And you can also hear the sound. So you can hear the call, for example. And you can see that there are multiple examples by different areas and times. And even from Oregon, in this case. So you can hear that there's a variety of sounds and this is a, con a great conversation to have with kids as well. You can look at the rock pigeon and again, you have two sets of pictures and you can add to that list as well. So this is very clear, very well illustrated from National Geographic and it allows you to see a very interesting birds and identify them and learn about them. And you can see that you can even have a quiz. If you get really good, you can start doing a quiz that involves listening to the calls and then identifying what the birds are and other fun things that you can do. So a, a way to interact there as well. The next one I want to talk about is the Peterson's Field, Gu field Guide. And they have field guides for lots of areas. I especially like the one for backyards because most of our students don't necessarily get to go out too much in nature. If they do, it's fantastic. But if not, they're still going to find a lot of birds in their backyards. And here is how you search. You can say, I'm looking for a specific state. Uh, we're in Nebraska, but let's look at what you can get, let's say in Alaska and then uh, the habitat is uh, maybe coastal and we we'll want to see what we can see in November and all types and I found one type that was sorted immediately 
Uh, what you do have to know is most of these guides have a paid version, and this paid version includes a considerably larger number of birds. And if you are interested very much in birds, I think it's worth investing in, not necessarily for every computer or every student device, whether it's an iPad or something else, but uh, at least one per classroom or one for a science teacher would be really helpful because then everybody can use it. And you again get get the pictures, you can see that this one has multiple descriptive pictures that they include. They talk about habitat and there's an overview. Again, you can see a map and you can have your own notes that you can add, including photos and notes. So if you identify a bird, you can start creating a notebook of birds we've identified, including the photos and telling where and when and a uh, learning from that. So this is the Peterson's field guide. There are other field guides that are really good, but I want to, uh, for the last app, to talk about BirdSnap. In the past, we've talked about uh, LeafSnap, which is a great app. It uses face recognition software to actually do different tasks, like identifying leaves. And here, what it can do is identify birds. And what you can do is you can take a picture, and this works on the phone or on the iPad. You can take a picture or pick from your photos. I have a photo, so um, I will use this photo to try and identify. You center and enlarge the photo, and then you, are, you tap on the eye and tap on the tail, and then it goes through a scan and tries to identify what kind of bird it is. It's not 100%, but it does give you a really good clue about where you want to start looking and how much information there is in the photo to help do this kind of identification. And so here, you actually don't have to go through that process, but instead you find out that it's a mallard, and then when you click on it, you can see different configuration of mallards. I love the way this uh, app is organized. I love that idea of automatically identifying, and then you can get a, a description, you can get a range map, so you can actually see a lot more uh, about this bird across the United States. So uh, BirdSnap is a great way to identify them quickly without actually having to go through all of the phases. I would argue that both skills are important and you want to use both, especially since the uh, BirdSnap is good but uh, far from perfect. So today on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about different apps to identify birds and to use what we find out in nature, even in our backyard or in the schoolyard, to learn about the world around us. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.